Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Luke The crowds asked John the Baptist, What should we do? He said to them in reply, Whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? He told them, Do not practice extortion, do not falsely accuse anyone, and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel for this Gaudete Sunday comes from St. Luke. We have been reflecting on this spirit of the third Sunday of Advent, which is rejoicing in the Lord. In the first reading from the prophet Zephaniah, we see how Jerusalem, Zion, should rejoice because the Lord, the Savior, is in their midst. And they will be vindicated. They will be protected from their enemies. And because the Lord is there to protect them, then Israel should not be fearful. Israel should not be discouraged anymore. Rejoicing in the Lord. Now, in the second reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians, the same theme is developed. Rejoicing in the Lord because the Lord is close to us. The Lord is near. And so, we should dismiss anxieties. And instead of anxieties, a trusting prayerfulness in our relationship with God will give us deep peace and joy. You find joy, tranquility, when you know you can trust in someone, especially in the Lord. So this is the quality of joy that is being given to us during the season of Advent, especially this Sunday, rejoicing in the Lord who comes to save us. Now, normally, when we are joyful, we become careless and reckless. How many people out of joy, though this is a very sad reality, among fresh graduates no? in college, oh, on graduation night, they rejoice. They eat, they drink, they get married, and they become reckless. And some of them on graduation night no, uh, get involved in accidents that are fatal. What does rejoicing in the Lord bring to us? The gospel gives us this. Joy, Christian joy, leads to Christian commitment. True joy in the Lord, rejoicing in the Lord, leads to a quality of life and a quality of personhood. And in the gospel, the center of Christian joy is St. John the Baptist. He preached to so many people along the banks of the River Jordan about the coming of the Messiah, which brought joy and anticipation to people. Israel has been waiting for this. And here comes John, announcing to them the fulfillment of their hopes, who will not be joyful. But then the people asked them, asked John, what do we ought to do? If the Messiah is coming, of course, there is joy, there is anticipation, but what should we do? 
This is an important question. What do you do because you are joyful? What do you do on account of your joy? Now, look at the answers of St. John. St. John first said, Those of you who have two coats, give one to the person who has none and share your food with the hungry. <laughs> you will say, kill joy. But no, this is the obligation of someone who rejoices in God. Because you have found God, you develop solidarity towards the poor and the needy. That is almost like an, a spontaneous expression of joy. If the Lord is close to me, I want these people to feel and experience the closeness of God through my solidarity and my compassion. The next group of people that approached John the Baptist was the group of tax collectors. What should we do? <laughs> if we are joyful with the coming Messiah, what should that entail of us? And St. John the Baptist said, do not cheat, <laughs> be honest, do not exact from people more than what they need to pay. Honesty, consideration for others. This is a fruit of Christian joy. If the Lord is in your midst, you will not cheat. <laughs> you will not take advantage of other people. Then came the soldiers. What should we do? And St. Uh, John the Baptist said, Well, do not bully anyone. Do not use force. Do not denounce others falsely and be content with your pay. In other words, develop the true spirit of service, not abuse of power to ruin other people. Service. These are the expressions of joy, solidarity and compassion, honesty truthfulness, service. You know, if you engage in all of this, you will experience the joy which the world cannot give. And I think St. John the Baptist was able to heighten the expectation for the Messiah. In fact, they thought that he was already the Messiah. But look, he taught them to be truthful in joy. And he practiced it and said, no, I baptize you with water, but I cannot really forgive your sins. The one who will come after me will baptize you in the spirit and in fire. He will truly purify you. And when he comes, he will make you people of communion and compassion, of truth and of service. My dear brothers and sisters, joy in the Lord leads to commitment to neighbors and to the common good. And it's a good tradition that uh, during Christmas, as we celebrate the birth of the Lord, we exercise our joy by helping the poor, going to the orphans, sharing the little that we have, and making resolutions not to cheat on people and not to uh, be false, not to pretend that we are serving when in fact we are serving ourselves. A few days ago, uh, there was a report on uh, the news about a, a police officer, I think in New York City, who, without his knowing it, was caught on camera talking with a homeless person. And uh, that conversation revealed to the policeman that uh, the, this homeless man had blisters on his foot. And he offered to buy this man socks. But the man refused, said, no, I'm okay. But this person who, was, who caught this policeman no, uh, followed him and saw him entering a shop. The policeman bought a pair of shoes for the homeless and gave him the pair of shoes. And uh, he became a celebrity <laughs> no, for this little act of kindness. 
he was he was interviewed, and I was I was uh, amazed. He said, "Well, I I did not do it in order to become famous. I I did it simply because I thought it was a human uh, calling to share the sufferings of a homeless person." And you know what he said? What really gave me joy was the fact that after receiving this pair of shoes, the homeless said, God bless you. He said, I was so privileged to be blessed by God through a poor homeless man. This is what we're talking about. The joy that will come when you know the Lord is with you. The Lord who transforms you. And you don't do it for show. You do it simply because of love. Then there is peace, true peace in the world. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. In this day and age, social networking has become a very convenient mode of communication among people. With just a click and the power of the internet, you are able to reach your loved ones wherever they are. On the other hand, it is saddening and alarming to know that there are some people who take advantage of the reach and availability of social networking sites spreading scandals and false information about a certain entity or personality, engaging in fraud and scams, and at times pretending to be someone else. Recently, I have been getting reports that there are fan pages and personal accounts under my name and are circulating over Facebook. To set the record straight, I have no personal Facebook account. Rather, I have only one Facebook page, and it is being maintained by Jesuit Communications. I seek your help in reporting fraudulent pages and accounts, not only those concerned with myself, but also with other people and entities. Let us keep the social networking world a good communication venue by being truthful. <laughs>